Let me just pop the scene on so I know where we are. Okay, and we'll count down onto this here. Well, good morning, folks. Um, yeah, another leader's live. Um, it's a Wednesday morning here in the UK this morning, and it's just after 8.45. And we've just gone live just a little bit early because we were quite worried that actually the live was going to work this time. Sometimes it fails, so I've just popped on just a little bit live, uh, a little bit early. So we're live, live, live. Uh, we're live streaming. Um, we're live streaming all over the place, actually. Oh, and I can just see I've just come up on um, the live stream, so that's... That's all good to know, and oh, I've got a few people already dialed in. Fantastic! Uh, so we're live, live, live. We're streaming on. We're, I can't believe where we're streaming to. We're streaming on LinkedIn. We're streaming on YouTube. We're streaming on a couple of Facebook groups, on Twitter. Um, now, listen, we usually go live on a, on Tuesdays, but we've got a Wednesday today. Um, so my reserve day, just in case I can't do Tuesday, or I guess can't do Tuesday, and we've got um, yeah, we've got Kate Young in the room today. Speech. Um, therapy specialist I'll come to Kate in a moment so um, and just enjoy the music as we're just counting down and uh, yeah we're just coming to the end of that now so I'll just turn the music off and there we go so yeah good morning good afternoon good evening you know wherever you are in the world you know welcome to this week's uh, Leaders Live Breakfast Show we're just slightly um, we're a day late today I usually do Tuesdays um, as you probably know if those of you that are regular but um, today was a Wednesday so it's a Wednesday or a Tuesday depending how busy I am and whatever whatever else is happening in life and listen folks we've got a great session this morning this morning I'm joined by speech and language uh, therapy specialist Kate Young good morning Kate how are you doing good morning very well thank you hope you right. and your listeners are all well yeah, I, I hope so too. Um, we've got we usually have a lively crowd, so there's quite a few people joining at the moment. So that's that's great. I can see the live feed moving along. So please comment as you go along. I'll talk about that a lot all in a minute. Um, so, Kate, just before we, we I kind of move on to other stuff and come back to you again, you, have you got a friend with you today? Have you got Larry Larynx with you today? Oh yes, I have. I have my. Of my Larry Larynx. <laughs> so a real live model of our internal workings of our voice box and everything. So that'll be really interesting. OK, I'm going to come back to you in a tick if you don't mind. So I'm just going to just, just carry on with this. Um, so look, quick teaser for you folks. Listen, in the last 18 months, we have probably um, used our voice actually probably more than ever before. And it may surprise you folks that, you know, the online world of video communication, it really does take its toll on your voice uh, more than you might think actually and for some you know the acute effects of covid as well um, they also have affected people's speech too for some people and uh, if we've got time we might we might just touch on that um, because you know these are these are topical topics right um, so today we're exploring um, a whole bunch of stuff around our voice so you know how is your voice produced and why is your voice so important to your identity and your emotions and your presentation of yourself your communication style with others and all of those things. So there's a lot more involved than just this this talking box in our in our throats. Um, why should you look after your voice and yourself to support your voice? What are the signs to look out for, folks, um, that suggest your voice is having problems and looking after your voice, especially when doing all this online calling stuff? OK, so I can see this likes coming up already. That's brilliant. Um, what equipment should we be using to protect and project our voice when we're doing so many online calls? I think that's really important, actually. So this Kate, this the, uh, Kate has helped me with actually as well. And you know what simple voice warm ups and hits and hints and tips are useful to practice for a busy day of talking um, meetings and presentations and all those online video stuff that we're doing. So all this and a lot more coming in our live chat. Um, with Kate today. If you don't know me, I'm Andrew Jenkins. As always, please, 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 I encourage you to interact with us um, and ask loads of questions and comments and we'll pick them up as we're going along. Um, we can see the comments as they're, they're coming. So please say good morning to us. Please interact. Smash those likes as well too, folks. Really appreciate that. And please let me know if our audio is coming through okay <coughs> too. Um, Kate's audio sounds just slightly scratchy this morning, but I think we'll be okay. Um, so back to you again. So hi, Kate. You know, great to have you on Leaders Live Breakfast Show. So excited to have you um, talking about don't take your voice for granted, Kate. Absolutely. Thank you for inviting me. It's lovely to be here representing speech and language therapy and voice specialists. Um, yeah, that's right, Kate. So you are yeah. actually, um, let me just introduce Kate. I forgot to introduce her, actually. So clinical lead speech and language therapist, um, uh, voice neck 
head and neck at University Hospitals of Derby and Burton Trust. She also, Kate also runs a private practice. Um, Kate is an NHS specialist and soon to be consultant speech therapist expert. Ooh, so we've got, the, we've got the, the lady in the room today. And actually Kate is helping me personally to restore and recover my voice after I got a little bit of nerve damage on one of my vocal cords that Kate pointed out to me. Um, uh, and it got damaged through um, just a simple virus that I caught way before COVID, actually. And um, yeah, Kate's been helping me with that. So, Kate, you know, um, I, I know you've got a proper model that you've just introduced to us, uh, Larry Larynx, uh, to bring it to light, you know, to bring to life to us how our voice actually works. So let's start there, Kate. How does our voice actually work? Over to you, Kate. Well, yeah, thank you. So our voice is part of our body. It's um, produced by three basic things. I think Andrew's got some really nice photos to put up on the screen. Sure. So when we when we produce voice, we need three basic things. We need a power supply, our breathing, which is supported by our body and torso. Yeah. We need a sound source, which is basically your vocal folds oscillating or vibrating. And you can see on the screen a bird's eye view of your vocal folds, mm. which are in the top photo open for breathing and in the bottom photo, um, closed for speaking, swallowing, coughing, etc. But that, that would be the normal position in the bottom photo for speaking. Um, it's, it's a very lovely valve. So we use it for swallowing and it closes. So voice is power, sound and then resonators. And resonators is everything from your vocal folds up to the tip of your nose and your lips. And all of that inside space makes wow. you sound like you and it helps you project your voice, create character, accent, etc. So that's where your voice comes from. Three basic things. Here is Larry the larynx. It's a very <laughs> big nice. larynx. It's um, wow. these these vocal folds in there. I'm going to do some clever sort of um, lighting effects with my mobile phone. So this larynx <laughs> has got. Um, it's, it's it's a very good old friend. This one. Oh. So this this piece of bone here is in the top of your voice box. Right. This is yeah. your Adam's apple, and we oh. all have one. It's just a lot more prominent in gentlemen. Okay. And then at the bottom of the larynx, you then have a windpipe. So we breathe oh, okay. through your larynx into your windpipe. And when we look inside, you can see right behind your Adam's apple, light is shining. Oh, yeah. that is where your vocal oh, folds are yeah. okay so, so when you go to the ent doctors yeah. that's what they see with their camera that goes through your nose and down to look at your throat yeah it's a bit uncomfortable to have that there i was fascinated to see that live on screen and seeing my, my actual vocal cords as i was talking was just quite mm -hmm. incredible and they look just like that so uh, yeah yeah so yeah we breathe in yeah. we close our vocal folds we breathe okay. out the air runs between our vocal folds a bit like a simple instrument it creates oscillation at the level of the vocal folds and then we shape that sound for sound quality and speech and um, we can alter that particularly if we look at the world of people who use their voices professionally actors singers and obviously professionals yeah. who speak to uh, speak every day to mm. create all the character and meaning within our communication of emotional content um, mm. if we need to project over an orchestra if we're a singer um, and if we need to create different types of voice quality, if you're an actor and meaning within the script Gosh, and that, that we, we use that in, in meetings ourselves anyway. Yeah. Complex piece of kit. And it's just amazing yeah. how evolution has just created this incredible piece of, of uh, architecture, really, isn't it? It's a bit like, yeah. you know, that, that reminds me of, you know, when we're kids and we put a, a piece of grass between our thumbs and we blow through it and then we can resonate the voice, the, the sound of that reed. It looks a bit like, you know, the, the oscillations of our, um, our, yep. our, our voice Absolutely. there, the larynx. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. Okay. So look, this might sound obvious, Kate, you know, at, at a surface level, but you know, why is our voice so wrapped up with our identity and emotions? I'm sure there's a deeper thing that's going on here. Yeah. And so, I know this is some um, research you're doing as well, isn't it, Kate? So sorry. Oh, interested. Yeah. Interested yeah. in doing it. <laughs> um, so yes, right. our voice is a bit like our fingerprint. It, okay. it is really um, our voice and our voice quality is unique to us and no one else this is why voice recognition programs work right. i'm not sure if i've frozen andrew sorry yes. um and so our voices even if in the lovely research world we do a laryngeal transplant of which there's been two in mm -hmm. the world that have been uh, looked into at research level the patient still sounds like them it the, the larynx that's been transplanted just creates sound yeah. when you look at the laryngectomy population where the larynx is removed and we use alternative voice sources they still sound like them. 
okay. uh, whether it's an electronic larynx or, or a different sound source from the body, they still have their accent and their quality. Yeah. So our voice is ours. We yeah. um, Unique to us. Yeah, it's our fingerprint. And yeah. it's very wrapped up in our emotion. Um, there's some very simple ways of considering this for non medical or neuroscientists is that when we look inside our brain mm. there is the structures that filter emotion and there are structures that um, identify what to do with that emotion and our voice center that operates our voice is next to the emotional filtering wow. part and therefore and this has been demonstrated in in research that any emotional change or any emotional uh, presence in our self it is shown up in the voice before any other part of our body so wow. for example when they look yeah. at they say for example a news reporter reporting when jfk was assassinated mm. the voice changed before any other feature of that patient or that that particular radio presenter Incredible. um yeah so our voice is highly sensitive to our emotional state and it is the first bit that changes we can see that in layman's terms if someone said hi how are you doing today we said yeah i'm fine we immediately tune into the emotional content of yeah. the message because that carries a very large proportion of our message. And you've probably in, in um, leadership and communication training know that 7% of our communication is carried by words. 23% yeah. is carried by voice and voice quality. That's right. And yeah. around 70% is carried by context, pragmatics, body language. Mm and all of those things. So it's it's much greater and more powerful in communicating the content of a message than words alone. Fascinating, isn't it? And, you know, I've done a lot of research myself on the the subject of building rapport. Um, mm. And it, it's fascinating that, that you know, we can build really great rapport on the telephone without having any visuals whatsoever because then our brains mm. have to rely purely on the sound. And when we're just focusing on tone, it's amazing how much we pick up rapport-wise between two people. Um, so the, the listening aspect of voice, of tone and intonation, inflections, all of those things are really important, mm. I guess. And yeah, and we do, as, as listeners, we tend to mimic, if we want to get along with the person we're talking to, <laughs> we, we match a lot to become cohesive. Yeah. And so we might really increase our intonation, yeah. we might decrease our intonation, we match our pace. Yeah. And we, we um, if we're wanting to cooperate with each other, and it's a lovely, lovely human quality in communication. Mm. Yeah, and to be well, aware even, of it means we can use it. Yeah, and it, isn't that true? And we also pick up people's accents and the inflections they use on words and whether they go up mm. at the end of a word or down on the end of a word or the way they pronounce something. We quite often mimic that in conversation. It's, it's often in semi-unconscious, isn't it? You know, we, we're kind of mm. semi-aware we're doing it, but it's actually part of our match and mirroring processes that we're doing and that's why the voice is so important fascinating wow and that that brings me on kate so you know why is it so important that we look after this apparatus and what can go wrong you know um and you're treating um, me at the moment so you know, <laughs> what things go wrong with voices so, yeah so it's it's mm. is very important 90 percent of our professions in this day and age yeah. rely on voice and communication mm. it's a very voice heavy professional yeah. world worldwide professional case uh, requirement um our voice is made up of cartilage a small amount of bone yeah. um and muscle and the muscle is the same type of muscle that you would find in your arms and legs mm -hmm. so it, you get the same fatigue effect okay um you also uh when we talk about the oscillation of your vocal folds they they meet so in a in a man's voice on average they might meet about 100 times per second if if they were speaking at 100 hertz and in a female voice they might meet 200 times per second so there's effectively a contact effect uh -huh. all of our body has healing properties within it what okay. we don't want is to become out of balance so if you don't have any structural neurological other conditions but you simply are using your voice after a whole day of talking we know and we've seen this with nice research and scoping people before and after a day of work such yeah. as teachers there's a nice study in hong kong oh, I bet. Um, we know that vocal folds should be white they start the day white and when the teacher finishes the day and has the lucky research task of being scoped again they've got quite pink vocal folds because of that constant tissue contact Gosh. so we need recovery time mm. and this is where we do think 
I think a lot of people can take their voices for granted. Yeah. They, they, it is a structure that needs um, respect and recovery. And that busy day as a performer, then working behind a bar, then catching up with your friends yeah. and not looking after yourself is, is actually something that really overuses the structure. And when it becomes inflamed or okay. pink or swollen, we then start using our muscles differently and we will fatigue a lot quicker or we will run into habits that we simply rehearse that are ineffective because of the marathon we need to speak each day. So we uh, run into muscle tension problems. Okay inflammatory problems, yeah. um, contact lesion problems such as nodules, mm. uh, pseudocysts where you get sort of like a whiplash and a, um, like a, a surface blister effect on the vocal folds. Mm. Um, but the simple word muscle tension is seemingly harmless but incredibly disruptive and preventable and fixable. The other issues are, are preventable and fixable too. So mm. we we do need to look after our voice. It's a structure that needs excellent hydration. Yeah. It, you know, it, we run a marathon or maybe two with our voices every mm. day. If you Gosh. have any interest in looking at some of the um, research in how much we use, there's, there were some studies that were done in London and they, they put a, a monitor on patients and it was a bit like a step counter for your larynx. And there were <laughs> huge, huge distances that um, the professional voice users were speaking. Yeah. So, so we water, need to, to rest yeah. water. Yeah, rest, yeah. Um, we need to warm up our voice. We wouldn't warm get up. off the sofa and run yeah, we'll come on to for a couple ups. of hours. We yeah. need to warm up our voice okay. and we need to recover our voice. We wouldn't do high level exercise and then do nothing afterwards. Okay. And we, it would be really healthy to pace the voice activities that you have throughout the day. If you've got meeting after meeting after meeting, uh, or in presentation after presentation after presentation. That's a high level of challenge. It is. Um, yeah, and considering, it. yeah, and considering the content of those meetings and what um, what additional things need to go with your communication for those meetings, such as it could be a highly stressful meeting, there might be complex things to communicate, um, there might be varying size groups, there might be issues that bring different emotional content for you or the listeners yeah. to that meeting, but actually structuring your working day and being okay. respectful of your voice yeah. can really help. And in a recovering voice, that's mm. exactly what we as speech and language therapists would do, is say, don't do all the hard stuff back to back, yeah. pace, pace make, make, a, make a structure. Think mm. about where your meetings are during the day. Give yourself some, some rest and recovery time, Kate, I think is yeah. what I'm hearing here. And, and yeah, do you know absolutely. what? I'll bet you most of us don't do that. We just go from one meeting to the other. Um, mm. The other thing I'm interested to hear, Kate, and this is I'm just going to in interject this question here. You talked about, you know, um, I just wonder whether there's a, a link between anxiety, worry and stress and oh, yeah. the effect mm. that we have on our voice, Kate. Very much so. Mm. Um, anxiety and stress uh, represents itself in our bodies. Yeah. Um, yes, it has a, it? a hormonal effect and a, yeah. and a physical effect on us. Uh -huh. um, but yes, it can it can lead us to using patterns in our body that are unhealthy, yeah. uh, unhelpful, and then we repeat them because of the amount of talking we need. Yeah. Um, people can lose their voice completely through anxiety and stress and then wow. need to see a speech and language therapist, an ENT doctor, to understand that's truly what the issue is and yeah. then we help them recover their voice. Yeah. The more, the more um, stress and anxiety we experience, the, the, the more we find ourselves using our voices differently. And yes, it will show up in our voice. It'll show up in our, It'll show up in our communication reactivity. Yeah. And it, uh, it's something that's very understood in our profession. And often with these sorts of voice problems, we go looking quite early for when we have a really good rapport with the people we work with to say, to, to dig a bit deeper and to, to yeah. see if they um, can share that on. because we can actually treat that side by side and, and create a really robust change there's some nice leaflets on this a lot of what i'm talking about is in some of the free leaflets on the british voice association website and there's a lovely leaflet on emotion and voice that can really yeah. help you have some understanding yeah i've got those links folks um for, for everybody um who's watching this mm. they'll be in the description after we've finished um look i'm just going to turn to the audience for a minute um you're remarkably quiet today. This is often not the case when we go when we go live. So, you know, please 
feel free to um, pop some comments in, some questions. If you put a queue in front of your question, that would help me to just fetch it out and see what's going on. So please, mm-hmm. you know, interact with us. Um, ask Kate some questions as we're going along. Um, I, really interesting about that linkage between stress and emotion and you know anxiety, which is you know. We, we, we know that that's on the increase with our very fast, rapidly changing world. Are you noticing that you're getting more and more patients then? Is there a direct correlation to that that you're noticing? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I don't think COVID's mm. helping. No, indeed. Very um, interesting. So, yeah, uh, yeah it, it's, mm. um, it's something we're needing to account for in the NHS and yeah. the health services. And um, the nice thing about us being human beings is this is all part of us. Yeah. And actually, some of the things that we discover in sessions is that if we accept that this is us being a human being and not a robot that's controllable, is actually working with ourselves, working and being open with our needs, mm. addressing them, and re looking at the structure of how we expect our lives to run yeah. can give us a chance to process emotion, yeah. uh, to learn skills to process emotion. We're not put on this planet with every single coping skill we require. And um, yeah. uh, we we need to respect that part of our humanness and um, and that. and self self care yeah. for our voice and self care for our um, emotional well being. And yeah. if we do that, we, we we show that respect for ourselves. We show that respect for our colleagues and friends. I love that, and you can do that. I love the way you've expressed that, and you can do that through our mm. voice as well. And you can you know, a skilled speech therapist can mm. can help us do that. And Kate, what are the kind of, you know, for us to become aware of, you know, what are the signs that we need to look out for that might suggest to us mm-hmm. that we're having problems looking after our voice, you know, especially with all the kind of stuff we've just been talking about, online calling and the stress yeah. and anxiety. What are the kind of first things that we might notice? Well, um, I know I know you've got a mix of audience, but mm. you were talking about sort of more business um, folk who were, yeah. have um, joined your call. Yeah. Um, I think a really common one that we find is people start clearing their throat. <clears> the <throat> voice uh, doesn't sound right, yeah. and we start clearing our throat. Clearing That's, our throat. That is quite harsh on our vocal folds. You saw mm. them at the beginning. You get sort of a really big tissue movement and quite a whiplash effect. Okay. And, re- and repetitive throat clearing often occurs when someone's got tightness yeah. in their throat, dryness in their throat, tightness, fatigue, tightness. because it simply doesn't feel right. So the first thing we do when our throat doesn't feel right is try and... <clears throat> get rid of it. it but actually it's my it just remains so when yeah. you start picking up on yourself or someone says oh you're clearing your throat quite a lot or you hear yourself doing that in meetings record mm. a meeting listen back to yourself that's it that's a, an early sign yeah. feeling like you have a sense of tightness in your throat and increase oh, yes. in effort as you go across the day yeah. often when folk are meeting us for assistance they just don't feel like talking at the end of the day because they're so vocally tired Feeling tension in your body because as soon as this, as soon as the voice box is really struggling, you start putting effort into other parts of your body, whether it's face, jaw, yeah. uh, torso, and feeling yeah, and start comp- if you start noticing yourself compensating and feeling mm. tension in those muscles. Okay. Um, and then Useful. the other one is if you start sounding different. Um, listen back to yourself. So if your voice doesn't sound clear, mm-hmm. if your voice sounds rough, or you think, gosh, the morning was great, but later on in the day, it doesn't sound so good. Yeah. Uh, I can't do this meeting without a glass of water. Well, we should always have a glass of water with this. Um, so, um, yeah. and, and for some folk who just lose volume and really can't project. And, the, mm-hmm. and when you're really at better, a very fatigued stage, this is before sort of vocal injury, but you're actually just muscularly very fatigued, we begin to lose our intonation pattern and we begin to lose sort of our stress pattern because they're more subtle movement changes. And as we build up tightness in our system, we can't make our voices sound more interesting and move our pitch around. And we can't put emphasis on things as well because these are more finely tuned muscle movements. So if you're beginning to lose the interest in your voice and you find it really hard to engage with that, think, hmm, I wonder if, Mm. I wonder if I need to stop and do something about this. Have a drink, think about your warm up, think about your recovery, think about the pacing of big heavy meetings across a day. Interesting. Um, mm. Yeah, I mean, I I am, I I was speaking in, I think it might have been Manchester one day, and I was speaking regularly during pre-pandemic. And a lady came up to me afterwards and said, look, I'm a speech and therapist specialist, you know, language specialist. I've noticed that there are certain 
bits of your voice that you just can't reach and you know you you're you're finding that that difficult she was picking it up in my tone yeah and yeah. You know, she advised me to go and see the doctor to go and see a specialist and that's when I came to you eventually absolutely um, yeah. and mine was through um from from what you and and um uh, the professor said was well it looks like you've probably had a virus which has has, has knocked out one of your vocal cords or has, has damaged some of the, the nerve yeah. endings yeah is that that's quite common is it it is it's mm. it's um you know well we work in voice clinic and in voice yeah. therapy so we tend to see all the ca- cases who do have a viral impact on their larynx a it's a bit impact. like bell's palsy so ah, okay. you know we have people have viruses and they have a paresis yeah. on one side of their face yeah. the same effect can occur in the larynx and it can okay. either recover fully partially or not at all yeah. but we, we're the professionals who help with the recovery or with the now what mm. if it hasn't recovered yeah. Mm. And I suppose, you know, yeah. if you're a singer or, a, or a, um, you know, speaker like me, you become more acutely aware of where your voice is, is struggling from. Mm. And uh, mm. yeah, useful to, uh, to get some feedback along those lines as well. Um, so, you know, thinking about that, you know, and, and you talked about teachers earlier. And I was just thinking that the link to me was, well, you know, we've just gone through 18 months worth of pandemic where teachers primarily <laughs> have been talking continually online not mm. just in a classroom, but now online. Has that affected their voice more, um, do you think, um, being in the online world? And if so, you know, how can we protect our voice, you know, and yeah. when we're doing so much online, working from home sort of video call? Yeah, actually, it, it's a lot of teachers mm. and business people. Yeah. A number of teachers have actually pre-recorded lessons that okay. then get played for the students, which mm. does help and um, pace the intensity and then they can do explanations so they use they they spread out their voice use i don't know how that works with meetings if there's a presentation i know that in my in the professional world for speech therapy there are therapists who will or or, or medical people who will pre-record their presentation and then answer questions at the end and that's one way of pacing voice um delivery um teachers and other voice professionals who are now very much online um are really uh changing how they feel about their voice and often you know we talk about you know on the kitchen bench instead of a ergonomically uh, designed desk at work um and we sit on the bar stool etc and your posture is quite different so we need to think about optimum posture if there's a legal requirement in the workplace we don't really uphold that when we get home we also need to think about the room acoustics so sitting well sitting uh close to the desk having your computer at eye level so you're not looking down or up um having these yeah <laughs> so um yeah. so and p- particularly i mean i i don't have my work one with Look me but with the microphone yeah because what we as human beings have is a yeah. feedback loop if any of any of you seen the king's speech there's a section in the yeah. beginning of the king's speech Brilliant. where they they disrupt the feedback loop so if he can't hear himself yeah he can't stutter but for the non-stuttering population of the world we need to hear ourselves. You know, if we've got uh, our music playing, we talk loudly to the next yeah. person. But if we can't hear ourselves, if we're just projecting at a computer, yeah. we're not actually functioning in a normal feedback loop. Uh, when we put in our, our earbuds and we have a mm. microphone, we have normalized our feedback. We don't over project and we normalize our voice use. So these are very powerful to reduce unnecessary overworking in our voices. Um, there are some really good ones out there and um encouraging workplaces to supply them is great um so the other thing is you know posture thinking about what type of environment you're working in and the acoustic surroundings of that environment if you're working from home um the other things are checking and relying on the electrical equipment and less Mm. on yourself there's some of us have got a habit of overcompensating on a telephone yeah. overcompensating with a microphone and not trusting it will do what you want it to do right. for you yeah. so there are it is helpful to step back and and use 70 percent of your voice capacity that's really useful. as i as as i would say to a singer i said if you're rehearsing yeah. just go in with 70 percent of excellent technique yeah. but don't put your you need that leeway if you need to step up for any particular part of your speaking day performing performance etc 
if you're a marathon runner, you don't want to run at 100% for the entire <laughs> marathon. Yeah. So you need to choose where what yeah. you put in for that marathon. Okay. Um, if, I know there might be some voice specialists listening in and sure. they will probably yeah. describe this much better than me, but there are techniques for actually learning microphone use for performance. Yeah. And that's important to do that. So there's acoustic non-miked non and, and, and miked technique. Yeah. You know, and so we, yeah, we need to listen to our listeners and our... So true. I mean, I've got I've got earbuds in now, and uh, just brilliant. Yeah. And I can hear the feedback from the microphone, which is really handy. But when I haven't got that, you know, Sarah, my wife will pick up and say, "Andrew, you're shouting in the microphone." So you know, mm -hmm. actually, that's really useful to be more aware of that we haven't got often that feedback loop, which is why this equipment, like having a microphone, like I've got here, and uh, I'm just trying to push it up, but I can't. Uh, you know, and, and then, you know, earbuds, you know, these are really important things to have. Um, and they just make the session um, so much easier on your voice. Mm. Right. OK, thank you for that. So, you know, so we're coming to the 30 minute mark here. Um, so. I'd like to sort of finish up with an important point for us personally to take away today. You know, what simple voice warm ups, hints and tips are useful for us to practice during a busy day to get that rest and recovery that you talked about, you know, and pacing our voice. So what are the kind of warm up exercises? I know you've got a freebie at the end to, and I'll, I'll put those all in the links of what to do, but what things can yes. we do? So we need <clears throat> to um, consider, okay, more importantly, okay, the first message I want to give is if your voice mm. isn't right, go to GP and ask for a referral to ENT, but preferably yeah. a voice clinic if ah. your voice is really not performing well. The yeah. British Voice Association has got an, a list of, local, of voice clinics across the country. So oh, okay. do, right. do consider asking mm. for a referral if it is not right and you have yeah. concerns and you will be um, assessed and looked after and given all the correct advice. But for mm. a non... A non um, uh, non-disordered population but you're trying to enhance what you're doing we need yeah. good hydration yeah we need good relaxation you know, when we're allowed yeah. back out uh into the real world uh, <laughs> a, a good yeah. back massage and, yeah. and just oh, taking nice. the tension out is very very useful there or go, any folks. of those self-massage devices that are good yeah. for your neck Branded are very very useful yeah um it's important to consider if you're taking medications such as inhalers to have excellent hygiene so sipping water and clearing your throat afterwards yeah. if you notice any indigestion or heartburn have gaviscon advance in your cupboard if you've had an indian takeaway um, uh, and make sure you take that regularly and if it's not right talk to your gp about it because yeah. reflux is not good for your voice no. and then looking yeah and then things yeah. like a nice um wheat bag that you stick in the microwave mm, and, warm up, and putting that around your neck and yawning when you're reading your emails oh <laughs> actually yeah. it's very relaxing it helps uh, the larynx drop it helps your jaw relax so and then a big a big because you see singers do that they're doing that with their voices yeah, yeah. okay yeah. so some of the things mm. that i was going to give you as some uh, some useful tips to take away is yeah. some simple things you know how to do at home yeah so gargling with gargling. your voice is yeah. very very relaxing uh, the position okay. to do this in so i've got my water here uh, is if i go sideways you want to yeah. take a small sip because you don't want to um uh, drown yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Live demo, folks. Fantastic. <laughs> so you've, you've re stretched these uh, muscles. Lovely. And you've yeah. relaxed the back of your tongue and you've yeah. relaxed your voice box. So doing uh, a couple of those, like five, mm. very relaxed, really loosens everything out. It's very yeah. useful. Um, sitting, at, there's a straw exercise, hence I've got this. Yeah, there's a video that link that my colleague in Rotherham put on the internet. I haven't created one in time for this oh, meeting. Well, if you give me the link, I'll pop it in the description for people. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Thank Rachel you. has done a, she's done it for her patients, but yeah. um, she said I can use it. Oh. Um, and basically it's a straw and yeah. in a bottle of water. So it's not full. Yeah. You can get you can get these kind of wide straws off Amazon. Yeah. Yeah, it's I've a silicon one. Yeah. And uh, Andrew knows all about this. And I, if <laughs> I <laughs> if I just show you, it's just really puffy cheeks. Yeah. Or without voice or yeah. and what this does, because I've had people sitting in CT scanners doing this as a research project, yeah. is it helps um, create lots of relaxation over that oscillation of your vocal folds. Yeah. It relaxes the muscles at the top of your voice box and the muscles going into the floor of your mouth. Wow. 
and it helps your larynx lower and relax. It takes a lot of tension out whilst encouraging lovely airflow. So I think of it a bit like a cross trainer for your voice, but very relaxing. That. And that's very useful. There you go. Simple. Yeah. Bit of water, straw, off you go. Yeah. Yeah, straw exercises are very handy to yeah. just just loosen and they're great warm ups and they're great to relax your voice. People are often surprised that their voice feels absolutely fine after a big day of talking when they've done some vocal yeah. relaxation. And we're we're very happy for people to prevent problems and not arrive on our doorstep because it's time consuming, it's costly yeah. Uh, to the person who's suffering from the voice problems and um, sometimes simple things that stop bigger problems snowballing yeah. are really powerful for um, caring for ourselves. Really interesting that. and if you haven't got you know you're in the car or something I quite often do voice exercises in the car because Kate you've taught me loads of these and that yeah. same exercise and just blowing air into my cheeks does that yeah like that is that is that okay yeah. as well because mm. um, you, know, you can't quite often drive doing that you know it's no. too, too much multitasking <laughs> yeah, yeah okay so yeah. some practical ways yeah, and you know and also sticking your tongue out you do and then brrr, exercises yeah, and then, and those oh yeah things. that's the one you remember that very well so yeah. just blowing raspberries is yeah. very relaxing it actually relaxes all of the muscle tube mm. from your lips through your mouth throat and down to your voice box yeah. so you know I, my job does make me look a bit like um, <laughs> a, a person with Daffy a range Duck. of odd odd sounds yeah. but you know just connecting airflow from the yeah. muscles around your belly button nice and relaxed and it's just all lovely yeah. relaxation movement and can um, create a lot more comfort in your throat and take out tension that doesn't need to be there and you know what you know having practiced this for a, a long mm. time now um, mm -hmm. you know, I found that you start to become really aware of how your throat works mm. and where the exercises are working and the more mm. you do them the more awareness you get around this whole mm -hmm. thing and even just doing this kind of exercise here and just you know um relaxing the tension in these these muscles here really helps to drop the box down i've found you know these exercises you've taught me and, and like mm, this and then like yeah, this and yeah. and then rubbing the jaw and things like that are really handy slightly more advanced yeah. techniques maybe but it's amazing yeah. what you can do just to self-care for your voice and you know find that recovery Absolutely. and that, you know and also the warm-up right uh, yeah. Before I go live, you know, I do a warm up of blowing raspberries and sticking my tongue out and sounding like a yeah. buzzy bee, and and then you know those those mm. and then going up, you know, um, voice going up, voice going down, those kind of things are really mm. helpful yeah. to relax my voice before I start. And you mentioned also clearing our throat and catching ourselves doing that. And what can we do instead? Just swallow? Is that is that? Is that what, yeah, yeah yeah actually catching is in sort of uh, it, it is a bit of mind over matter but uh, okay. if you give yeah. your throat something else to feel so we use a <laughs> distraction technique one if, if you can't get rid of that do go and see an ent yeah. go go via your gp and go and see an ent doctor that look yeah. i've got throat throat problems i'm always clearing mm. my throat it doesn't feel comfortable just go and see your gp and ask for a referral to understand sure. it could be underlying reflux that you're not noticing yeah. because they they present in different ways okay. but if it's just a habit mm. um for nice cold water so a glass of water with ice in it and every time you catch yourself needing to clear your throat have a sip let yourself feel something different and then you've not cleared your throat that time uh, so sip 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 and distract okay. so your your brain's saying oh i can feel something in yeah. my throat i want to clear it say okay throat feel this Instead. And here's your icy cold water so you've stopped that particular throat clear uh, okay. so it's 51 day 49 48 down to two or three throat clears in a day you've reduced all that um high impact contact in your voice box and really protected it yeah absolutely fast. so mm. becoming aware of that and actually reprogramming the way our throat um, is responding to stress and, mm. and, and finding different ways brilliant yeah with and, that, Kate. and if you can't do that and if your voice doesn't sound right don't leave it go yeah. and see your gp ask for a referral have a good assessment and take take on board the advice that mm. those doctors give you and it's it's better to have things checked out. We do see small and big things. Yeah. And we would rather you be well and we would rather you have attended. Yeah, I completely agree. Mm -hmm. So yeah. listen, folks, look, we've got we've got just a few minutes left and you know, just a little bit of time for you to interact with us. You know, please give us some comments so we can, um, you know, we, we don't want to miss on what you're thinking, um, your end listening to this. And just while you're typing, that's a little bit of a delay here. So, Kate, thanks ever so much for those kind of things. We'll hopefully pick up a few comments in a moment. So, 
Yeah, just brilliant to have you on the Leaders Live Breakfast Show, Kate. Fantastic. Oh, thank you for yeah. inviting me. Yeah. I, Absolutely. I hope brilliant. if any of my lovely colleagues are listening in, I, I know one of my colleagues picked up on it. I yeah. hope um, maybe they have any something to add in the comments section. There's there's a lot of knowledge around. There's a lot yeah. of people who work with professionals, such as the the audience you speak to, yeah. who are um, very happy to support and help. Yeah. Thank you. And you know, please, please make yourself known and you know, so we can say hello to you. But um, mm-hmm. just finishing up, look, you know, um, I hope you found that useful. Um, it was a useful topic, um, given you some f- some some food for thought, thinking about your voice um, in a different way, perhaps. And, you know, by the way, um, Kate's giveaway freebie voice care um, PDF. There's a couple of PDFs. Um, I think there's three, actually. Um, and there's something about post COVID as well. So if you've had your voice affected through COVID, or any other, you know, voice-related matter, you know, please feel free to get in touch with um, through your GP to a doctor, um, or you can um, get in touch with Kate directly through through LinkedIn, um, you know, and she can point you in the right direction as well. So you know, don't don't feel shy, folks. Um, and from my side, look, you know, if you're seeking to build some uh, develop a high performance team and lead your business, then you know, please contact me for a free one hour consultation. I'll be happy to chat to you. I'll pop a link on my website um, so you can see that in the uh, the, um, the description afterwards. And lastly, look, if you're a, an SME business owner who's finding it lonely at the top, you know, then please feel free to contact me um, to join Inspired CEOs. And uh, oh, we've just had Melanie, your friend Melanie, come on. I suspect. That's, Hi, Melanie. Uh, <laughs> so Kate says, so lovely to hear and see you as always. Eloquent, absolutely. The wonderful Kate is extremely eloquent, Melanie. I completely agree. She's got a lovely voice, and uh, thank you for hosting, Andrew. Oh, yeah. I agree. If in doubt, check it out. I like that. Very good. If in doubt, check <laughs> it out. Yeah, and it's funny how we pick up people's intonations because Kate uses the word home, and she goes home. And, she, and I kind of pick that up as well when she says that word. It's funny how we intonate little <laughs> little sayings of people. So um, thanks for that, Melanie. Um, really great to hear from you. Um, look, just a quick word on Leaders Live before we all leave. Um, in it, um, and what's happening next week as well. Look, I set up Leaders Live with the purpose to edutain and explore high performance topics via informal, fun feedback. It's a back and forth with interesting people like Kate with a mindset and a passion to help leaders, businesses succeed in these rapidly changing times. We pick up all sorts of subjects, you know, and this is a very different subject. So I think that's brilliant. And, you know, I do this because I believe this is important for this generation of business leaders who will get success through the people factor and through becoming aware of, of our own impact in the world. And therefore, you know, Leaders Live really taps into that kind of innate superpower of I to the power of we um, to change all of that. Next week on the Leaders Live uh, Breakfast Show, we're back to our regular Tuesday slot at the same time, 8.45. We have Christopher Ross talking to us about getting it done without losing your marbles. And this is about how accountability to a community or a team can seriously help you to deliver better results. So that's um, that's Christopher Ross. Um next week i'm looking forward to that and i hope you will do too so please be there or be square folks um that's all for now folks and uh, it's goodbye from me and it's good day from kate thank you very much cheers everybody see you later nice thank to you. have thank everyone there thank you cheers i'll just finish that kate <laughs>